Welcome to the first in the series of um, collaboration webinars. Today we're going to be doing the BIM management portion. Um, so let's get started. We have a lot of ground to cover. Okay, so if you look at the map of a life cycle of a building from the historic progression of a building and kind of what we learned through the maintenance of the building through design concept, um, the formal design through pre-construction, construction, and then on into occupancy. Um, the map um, would look something like this. For today's discussion, while we do have um, solutions that cover um, pretty much all of these uh, stages, today we're going to just kind of cover this, these three here in the middle, and then leaning a little bit towards the pre-occupancy side on the right there. And namely, we're going to be talking about BIM 360 Glue and how it can um, augment your projects and uh, really enable your project teams to uh, collaborate more effectively. So first of all, what is Autodesk BIM 360? Um, basically, it's a platform um, where project data is hosted as a shared resource to the entire project team. Um, so they can leverage the shared data instead of information sort of in individual little silos, they're really going to be working on and collecting and reviewing information that's collected in one uh, resource. And in construction today, a lot of the talk right now is about minimizing risk and reducing risk. Um, and then there's various kinds of risk. There's financial risk, there's physical risk, um, risk to the schedule, um, various other risks. So, you know, as we're kind of going along through this whole entire webinar series, kind of think about ways that you're attempting to reduce risk and efforts that you're um, engaged in. And hopefully, you know, these solutions that we're presenting will, will make sense and fit within those, those bubbles. So the great thing about BIM 360 is they've made it accessible just about anywhere and at any time. So if you have a computer with a web browser, you can access the data. And if you have an iPad, then you can access the data. And the beauty about the iPad is you can take it into the field on the job site and see the project data while you're there in the field. So you don't have to you know, go back to the trailer or lug around rolls and rolls of drawings. You just carry on this little two pound device and all of the data that you need is there and you're able to work with it. Um, so how does BIM 360 help with the project delivery? Um, so we talked about the anytime, anywhere access to the project data. Um, but really the main thing is it's connecting everybody, all the pieces and all the players, um, and all of their information in one place. So everybody's working on the latest information and not something that someone's thrown over the grenade wall at them. It's really... Um, this, this idea of sharing and working on a common data set and the live data set and being able to do our jobs more efficiently by directly affecting that information. So right now, BIM 360, here is a, um, a diagram that Autodesk has created that kind of outlines where um, the various BIM 360's product, 360 products occur. And we're going to actually be going over all of them in this upper gray chart through this webinar series. So please join us for the rest um, so you can get the full exposure. Um, today we're going to be talking about glue. And glue, although they've diagrammed it to only be within the pre-construction, early construction phase, um, the data that's hosted on glue, um, that will be carried through the project, even into building ops. And we'll, we'll talk about that as we go along. And then another product that was just announced at Autodesk University on Tuesday is BIM 360 Docs. And that's um, supposed to be the missing link. And it's it's pretty exciting. I've seen some Im images from it. Um, and that one is going to be the, the real umbrella mechanism to this whole platform on uh, the collaboration, collecting emails, and the, all the conversations that occur throughout a project and making it a more continuous stream. So like I said, we're going to be talking about BIM 360 Glue, and here's Autodesk's definition of what it is. It's a cloud-based BIM management collaboration product that connects the entire project team 
is Streamlabs BIM project review and coordination workflows. Okay, so in other words, if you take the Clash Detective out of Navisworks, you add a markup and review component, throw it on the cloud, share it with a bunch of people and allow them to review and mark up together, then it will rain glue. And then in a nutshell, that's what glue is. Um, so in other words, you're taking your data and the glue is really the thing that binds you. So when Autodesk first started using glue and first pulled it into the BIM 360 platform, it was really the idea of taking all of these information resources, and it's not just Revit, it's not just Navisworks, but there are many, many file types, and we'll show you those um, shortly. But taking all those, compiling it all together where the whole project team can read it, um, so it really is the glue that binds the team together. So let's look at a typical week in a coordination process. Um, hopefully, you've moved past this, but in typical scenarios, and I still see this day to day, um, this is what we see in a typical sort of coordination scenario. So you have your BIM manager kind of hanging out, um, dedicated by the team. Sorry, going backwards there. Um, and then you have the other disciplines hanging out on the side. At some point, they throw all their information at the BIM manager who collects it and then it in turn takes the data, kind of process it, and then distribute it to the appropriate members. Um, so right there, there's already two opportunities for an information loss. Um, the disciplines might have missed something to the BIM manager and then that person might have misinterpreted what the next person needs. So there's already two opportunities for information loss there. After they've worked on it a bit and they've reviewed the data, they'll throw it back to the BIM manager who kind of collects it and gathers it. And um, I guess the MEP might take a day longer. That's not just picking on MEP, it could be another discipline. They, you know, the next day they might throw more informa information at the BIM manager who has to kind of collect and compile it compared to the information from the previous day. And then the, we have this big coordination meeting and everybody talks about the information that the BIM manager has collected. So it's a very long process. So in a glue-enabled coordination process, notice everybody's working on Monday. But with everybody working in this cloud scenario, everybody's working on one shared goal. So you don't have information that you're throwing across the wall to the next guy. It's really the information I'm working on is the information that's available to my entire project team. And so throughout the week, people are able to access the data they need and affect any changes that they need to affect in context with everyone else. So it's, it's less of the go back and forth and apparently they get Friday off. Tell your, tell your bosses. I'm just kidding. So um, if you look at the key features and benefits of Glue itself, the first one, we've already talked about it, it's cloud connected office to field workflows. And this is also office to office. So really the main thing that you can take away from today is connecting the data across all disciplines, all players. And it doesn't have to be in construction too. You can definitely use this during design, um, especially when we look at the little model navigation, the Clash Detective tools. It's really easy to use, really simple user interface, um, accessible to the entire team. Um, so definitely relevant during design as well. Um, you know, we talked about that, and we're going to go over this concept of one click to access to BIM. And really what we're trying to do is we're, gonna, we're trying to transform how we coordinate. So we're not, even though we say we're doing BIM, we're still just kind of working in our own office and throwing things out the window to the next person. Um, really what we want to do is bring all that data together in the same place so everybody is working truly together on a coordinated BIM model. And we're going to talk about the exciting features of the iPad. And then, you know, Navisworks has a new integration. This is with 2016. Now you can save, you can append from and save directly to the cloud by way of glue, directly within Navisworks. You don't have to do anything extra there. And other design tools, so Revit, um, AutoCAD, Point Layout, and Civil 3D, they all have the ability as well to glue their models directly to the project site. 
Um, and then it does have an open API, so if you're a programmer, if you have custom things for your office, um, they do have an API available. It's hard to see in this image, but this top right one, that's a RFI. And then down below here, we have um, a document for equipment commissioning. So really, the, the sky's the limit, and they've kept it open so um, you can tie it into other third-party applications that you have. And the great thing here, like I mentioned, it's a lot of it is browser-based, and we'll go over the browser feature. There is the desktop application, the iPad apps, and then we already talked about the Autodesk design products that all work directly towards the same data. So you don't have to plug in your iPad, load up iTunes, drag and drop some PDFs over to it, or email yourself PDFs, um, and then go out on the field. It's really just open up Glue, sync the data, and off you go. So we're going to be talking about this one click to BIM workflow and what that really means. And we're going to go through each of the four applications that we talked about. And actually, right now would be a good time if we have a polling question, Lisa. If you want to do a quick question, we'll give everyone a little break from hearing me talk. So if you go to the polls menu on the uh, go to webinar uh, little device, then you can um, address that question. We'll give you about a minute, and uh, then we'll continue. All right. So let's carry on. So for the browser demonstration, we're just going to go through the little basic elements of what the browser interface looks like. And primarily, that's for administering the project, inviting team members, things like that. Then we're going to move over to the desktop application and demonstrate the features of that. Then we will step directly into Revit and work with that same information that we've been looking at on the browser and the desktop app. And then finally, we'll get to the iPad demonstration. So let's get to it. So first, what I want to do, I'm open up Chrome here. And if you go to b2.autodesk.com, that's the site to, that takes you to Glue. And you can see by my mug up here, I'm logged in as myself. Um, and then this is the overview that you're presented with when you first log into the website. Um, I'm in administration mode, and I'll kind of dig out of that for a second, and we'll come back to this later. Once you exit administration mode, um, then you get to see the overview of your projects. Right now, I'm in this 56750 project. I'm going to go up to all my projects. And it gives you a, a glance overall of all of your projects. And if you notice here, some of the little icons are orange. And this just tells me that someone has updated some information in the model that I might be interested in. So let me go actually back into this 56750 project. And then now we have these things. Um, first of all, our models down here on the bottom. And this will show us all the models that are loaded into our project. And then this thing called merged models. So if you think about your coordination meetings now, when you divvy up your models to prepare for class detection, um, you'll do, um, for example, uh, electrical versus uh, HVAC. And you'll tie those two models together, or link them together, and then you perform the class detection. And that's kind of the concept between this merged models is which two, two or more models are you going to bring together to do your analysis on? Um, so we can look at just the merge models. So I have a little menu just for that in case the overview doesn't show you everything you want to see. Same thing for regular models. And then you can look at the project members for your team. What I want to do real quick, just to give you the full exposure, 
is here I am at the very top level of my host. Um, so uh, one confusing thing here, on A360, this sort of shared team portal is a hub. On BIM360, it's a host. So they have the H the same, but just kind of be aware. Um, and actually, I'm going to step back into my host admin. So I'm going to admin my host and make some changes here. First of all, I'm going to go to this projects tab over here. And then I'm going to create a project. And we'll just call it this CAD webinar number one. And this is an expensive project at zero dollars. Um, one thing here, I'm going to add myself as the host admin for this project. So I am the host admin for the entire Glue host. Um, but I want to make myself an administrator to this project, so I'll add myself to that as well. That's an important distinction. I was lost for a few minutes trying to figure out why I couldn't see my own projects, and it was really only because I hadn't assigned myself to it. Um, if you want to add other admins, you can. Um, if they're already somewhere in your, on your host, then you can um, select them there. If they're not available already, you just fill out their email address click Add, and then it sends them some information. So now this USCAD training person is going to just be a project admin. So I'm still a host admin. They're a project admin. We have very similar rights as far as the project is concerned. And I'm going to click Create. And so two people have been, been invited to my project, and it's been created. So that's great. Now I can manage my team members or my project members. And I'm going to just add a few people. Ben 360 user. There we go. We'll do. We'll add Ben. Why not? We'll just add all of them. We'll add Deb. And we'll add Edward. And what I can do here is I can set their rights. So I can make Ben a project admin if I want to. He's external to my organization though, so I'm going to just make him. I'll make him a full member. And I'll make, actually, I'll make all of them a full member here. Um, now, if Edward was just a, a third party reviewer, or if he was the project owner, I might just set it to reviewer. So we'll just do that there for now. And I can add an optional message here. You don't have to, but you can. Um, I'll just do to my project without an enter. There we go. Send the, the invitation. I don't have to open up my email and send the invitation separately. It just sends that invitation for me. So I'm going to go into, um, I'm logged in as Ben. I'm in his email. And I'm going to just refresh over here. And I have a new email message from Autodesk Ben 360 Glue. So it's saying, Aaron Wagner, which is me, your presenter today. Um, has added you to the project to his project US CAD webinar one. So that's the project that we're uh, that we just created. So I can click take me there. And now it's gonna ask me to open up the glue application. So it already knows, hey, you're gonna use glue, we'll help you out, we'll just open up the application for you. Um, right now I'm not going to open it. We're gonna do that later. I don't wanna kinda do anything too early. Um, Oops, actually, there it is right there. Um, so in a nutshell, that's that's the interface for the web browser version. Um, and I had this open from before. I'm just going to kind of close it to refresh it for you. And I'll reopen Glue and log in as myself. So we're moving on to the desktop application now. I'll go ahead and make this full screen. So again, I'm logged in as myself. If I want to go back to that website really easily, I can just come over here to admin, and then it sends me back to the website that we just saw. And then you'll notice down here we have the project that we just created. One thing I wanted to point out too, if I go back to this top part, if it's the first time that you've opened BIM 360 Glue, you're greeted with this really handy um, sort of tutorial screen up here. 
And it'll walk you through creating projects all the way to merging models, finding and managing clashes. And then finally, it has a video gallery down here at the bottom. So it's a really great resource for um, learning more and more about using the platform. So I'm going to close that. So I've viewed all those. And they are pretty, pretty cool and very helpful. Um, if I go into our new project that we just created, I'm going to look at models. If I click on this upload models option here, now I can drag and drop models uh, into that little gray area there. If I have a folder structure already set up, so if I have some uh, Navisworks files separated from building files or Revit files, and then that's separated in other ways, um, I can drag and drop those folders into here, and it's going to automatically adopt that folder structure inside of Glue. So you don't have to recreate all of your folders. You don't have to adopt a new protocol for your folders. It, it all just kind of works out for you. So I could drag and drop these over here. I'll just do sort of a small one here. And then I can say upload. If I want, I can browse. And then here's the part I was telling you about the many, many file types. So there's, you could do 3ds Max files, SketchUp files, uh, Tecla files, many, many file types that you can upload to BIM 360. So they're not just isolating it to Autodesk information. If you have information from an outside party, hopefully all of you are using an Autodesk solution um, and your partners are using not Autodesk solutions, and then they can upload their data and we can see it all in context together um, to various extents. So if I upload a GIF, for example, it's not going to do a clash detection with the structure, but the, the data will still be there. So pretty cool features there as far as all those file types. And then I can come in here and I can select whichever files and then say open, and then I'll upload all of those. I'm not going to make you wait through all that. What we're going to do is we are going to jump right into Revit over here. So I'm going to open up the structural model for this, and here I am in Revit 2016. So we've moved from the web browser into the desktop application, which was Glue here. And now we're moving into the design software. And specifically, we're going to be looking at the add-ins folder um, and then this panel right here, BIM 360. If you've installed Revit 2015 or Revit 2016 or I should say AutoCAD or Navisworks or Point Layout, um, you might have already noticed this panel or at least noticed an option for that panel. Um, if I come back over here, I can click on downloads. And eventually that comes up. And it gives you an option to download those plugins for your design software. But the cool thing about Revit 2015 and 2016 is it's optionally automatically added. So I didn't have to add this se separate. It just came in by itself. So that was all very handy. Um, and that's already there. So what I want to do is I have the structural model open. And the first thing I want to do is I want to make it available to my project team. So I'm going to say glue. And if this is the first time you've used um, glue, it might ask you which host you want to use. So I'm going to use my collaboration series host. And I want to actually add it to our new project that we just created. So my views here became blank. I'm going to add views. <clears throat> now on this, don't make the mistake that I did and add every view under the sun into this. You can do that, and it'll be available. Um, and then you can definitely sort it into little subfolders. So the views, you can actually break up into subfolders. It's not breaking up the file, but it's breaking up the views. You can do that. Um, but it's a lot of information to manage on the cloud. So really what you should be focusing on is the information that is readily available to the rest of the project team as far as coordination. So I'm just going to do the coordination model for now, or the co coordination 3D view that's already set up in here. And I'll check that. I want to go ahead and include that. And then notice right now I can go ahead and I can change the name of this file here. So I can call this 
structural 3D coordination. And then I have a couple file type options here, DWF or Navisworks file. Uh, I'll just leave it as that. And then I can add it to a folder or actually create folders right here. So I can add many, many views and then go ahead and start assigning them to the subfolders, which is fine um, and pretty handy. But the next thing here, notice under last glue it's saying new. So it's, it's telling me, hey, you've never put this view up there before. This is going to be the first version. So what this is hopefully triggering for you is that BIM 360 has a versioning control system built in so you can look at previous versions or at least know when the thing was updated last. So this is telling me this is a new uh, view that's being glued. Just real quick, I want to show you these options here. I can optionally include rooms, linked files, construction parts, and then I can set whatever coordinate system I'm using. And that's pretty important um, for the model alignment once you get into using glue and the clash detective and things like that. You definitely want your models to align properly. So whatever alignment mechanism you're using on your project, you can select it here. And I'm just going to leave those and I'm going to glue that. And this might take a couple minutes. So let's go ahead and go to the next polling question. If we have some, Lisa. And I did this once. I loaded, um, like I said, the first time I did it, I loaded every view that was in the model. And it really took less than five minutes. So it wasn't too painful. The, the painful part came with managing it inside of glue later on. So just word to the wise, you can, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you should. So what we're going to do, this is going to keep on going, so we'll just wait for it. And it's going to send me a notification, and it's very rude. It's going to come right in my face when it's ready, but at least I'll know. So what we're going to do for now is we're going to move back into the Glue app. So this is the desktop application for BIM 360 Glue. I'll make it full screen. And there you go. So it just came in, gluing in progress through models being glued. This is a message not from Glue, but from Revit, wherever Revit went. This message is from Revit saying that the model is being glued, and it's going to let me know when it's ready to go. So that's fine. At this point, I can actually close this model. I'm totally done with that. Everything else that's going on is going on in the cloud, so I don't really need that anymore. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to move over to um, this 56750 project again. And I've already set up some merged models based on the models that I uploaded previously. And so what I did was the same workflow. I opened up the discipline models, and then we glued preset 3D views into the site uh, for coordination purposes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to make a new merged model. And I'm going to call this one L5. Um, Structure and HVAC. Okay, so I have my level 5 HVAC. And only because I know how the structural model was broken up, I'm going to select 2 and 3 there. And that's really all I need for this particular one. So you can name this thing pretty much anything that you want. But please, for your team's sake, make it something that's meaningful um, so they can quickly identify what this specific model is for. We're going to say merged models, which is generally pretty quick because the data is already there. It's just kind of sticking these Navisworks files or DWF files together. And so now on the desktop application, I have the full 3D model available here. Um, I want to switch real quickly to my complete model just so you can see um, the full effect there. So this is the full model loaded up. And like Navisworks, it's a lot more lightweight than opening this model in Revit, for example. So um, we'll go ahead and start navigating here real quickly. Um, if you notice, I have to move this go to meeting thing. Hopefully you all can't see that. But hopefully you can see the right side of my screen. And let me just, to be safe, 
I'll move the screen more towards the middle just so you can see it. If you've used any Autodesk applications within the last few years, you might recognize the view cube up here. So it's all the same. You can twist the axis. You can click on it. It'll send you to that direction. Um, you can click on a corner or drag a corner. And if you totally get lost, you can click home, and it'll send you back to the default state. There's also this nav bar over here, which if you click that top one, opens up the steering wheel. So again, this should be familiar if you've used the Autodesk products. If not, that's okay. We're going to go over some of the features. Um, and then we have pan, we have window, orbit. Um, I always forget what that one's called. Look around, which I apparently never use. This walk tool, so you can kind of go through and simulate walking in the project, and then just um, selection mode. So that's the nav bar over here. So the way the steering wheel works, if you hold, if you hover over any of these sections, so if I'm going to go over to orbit here, and as long as I'm holding my left mouse button, then I can go ahead and twist this model around as much as I want. Um, I'm going to take off the steering wheel for a minute, and I'm just going to show you now the mouse controls. And I'm sorry, you can't see my mouse right now, so I'll try to be as descriptive as possible. If I hold down the middle mouse button, then I can pan. This is just dragging the middle mouse button around. Um, if I scroll my mouse wheel, I can zoom in. If I hold down the shift key and move my middle mouse button, then we have a more specific orbit. Okay. Um, and if we double click the middle mouse button, okay, that doesn't work in the software. I just thought I'd try. All right, so moving on to walk. Actually, it's really hard to kind of navigate this one right now. I could kind of get down here and spend forever getting just right inside the lobby. But what I want to do for sake of time, I'm going to move back to that model that we model view that we just created, and I'm going to go ahead and go down in here. I'll set myself on that platform there, and I'm going to go back full screen just so it's a little bit more visible, and I'm going to go into walk mode over here. And here, I can set the speed by how far my cursor goes up or down. And I'm just going to walk around the project here, just kind of have a look. So this is kind of like um, a video game or virtual reality of the project. I'm, I'm experiencing this Revit data that's loaded up here. I don't have to have Revit installed to do this. This is just um, through the Glue app itself. So I'm going to walk around a bit more. And, oh, there we go. So we'll just look at these right here. So right now what I'm doing is the visual check of my model. And if you notice these diffusers, they're flipped. And if you didn't notice, that's okay. Um, but these diffusers here are flipped. And that's usually not too good for uh, air distribution. So what I want to do is I can save this. Oops and not destroy the view setting that I have. Um, I guess now would be a good time to do that look around. Huh? So I can look around. I can get back to the view that I had. And I can come over here now to my left bar over here. What we have from the top is selection, measure, uh, models. So this will open up a little dialog that shows all of the models that are in this uh, view set. And then we have our views. And that's the one I really want to get in right now. And right now, I don't have any shared views. So I want to make a new shared view. I'm going to say Add View. And I'll make it accessible to the entire project team. And I'll call this L5 Wing B um, Flipped Diff Users. I always like listening to webinars and somebody's type speaking what they're typing out. Entertaining. Uh, anyway, so now I have this new saved view. So I can come back to this later. I can mess up my view entirely, come back, and it's going to set me right back to that. So that's all pretty handy. But what I want to do is make this available to my entire project team. So I can come over here and I can click this little envelope here for notify. Or I can do a checkbox and then notify um, right there. But what I want to do, I'll go ahead and I'll pick everybody. So please review and update. I could probably put something a little bit more helpful. 
And then now that's sending an email to each of them for their uh, own use. What I can do now is I can actually come over here and I can do a markup. And again, I don't have any markups, so I'm going to go ahead and click Add. And one thing I want to point out right here is mine defaults to this gray color. When you go into Project Admin, you can actually set the default colors for each of your users, so every user has their own color. And that gray is really hard to see, so I'm going to pick something a little bit easier that I know nobody else has. So this purple, and I can circle these, and I can enter some text up here, and um, and as long as I haven't clicked save, I can go ahead and I can edit this text, or I can delete the circle, or add a better circle if I want to. Um, I can do all that, but as soon as I click save, now it's a markup that's part of the project. And again, I can notify the entire project team. So I'm going to, I'll just do Ben and Deb. They might like that. Um, here is the issue we talked about. Because while we were talking, I called them on the phone and said, hey, what's going on with your diffusers here? And we'll say, okay. So now, if I switch my views, notice that thing goes away. So we can't see the markups, which is pretty cool. You know that once you start navigating your views, you're not going to have all these markups all over the place. They're really contextual to the view itself. So if I double click that, it goes right back to where that markup was. So it's pretty handy. Um, I'm checking my time, and we're, we're getting pretty close to the end, so I'm going to speak a lot more quickly now. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump to the clashes uh, component here. And um, so right now, I don't have any clashes in my model because um, I haven't analyzed this view yet. It's a brand new view. So I'm going to go ahead and say find clashes. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that my structural columns and structural framing are addressed. Apparently, I don't have structural, oh, there's structural framing um, for both models. And just for sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and click all of them and then check my analytical model version there. And I want to compare it to the HVAC duct components. I'm not going to compare it to the flex ducts. Um, I'm just not going to do that. Okay, So we'll just click those. So now we have structure versus HVAC ducts. Okay, and then we'll say find clashes. Goes through. It's pretty quick. And very quickly, it found 264 clashes. And so now we have um, what's called a result set. So if I do multiple clash detection on the project, then, or actually I should say on this view set, then we'll see the different clash detection uh, sessions that we've done and the result sets. So um, if I zoom back out here, I'm going to click Home to get us back correct. You can see all of these little orange squares. And if I hover over them, then it has a little number that pops up. Hopefully that's a, uh, visible to you on your screen. But that was number 1112, and I can scroll down here and find uh, 1112 on the list. I can actually come over and I can just click a clash on this list, and it will immediately take me there. And it's going to adjust the view, um, the opacity of non-conflicting or non-relevant objects. It's going to change those. And that's going to highlight the two conflicting objects here. Um, one thing to point out, too, at the very top, it's sorted by the highest magnitude. So this one is almost two feet crossing. At the very, very bottom, it's 1 16th of an inch. So when I made my new clash set, so I'll show you that since I failed to do that before. Um, down here, I can set what the tolerance is. I didn't set a tolerance when I created this clash set. So 1 16th of an inch might not be a big deal. Um, so we have 264 clashes. That's really, really helpful, except maybe there might be a better way to look at it. So what I want to do is I want to look at um, just... I want to look at just the 3D, uh, the HVAC model. And I'll see here that this duct 
clashes with five beams. Okay, so this one is a lot easier for me to isolate the problem and look at what the easiest resolution is. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to check the top one, which affects the entire duct and all five of its clashes. And I'm going to add a comment um, to that. Um, move duct down. So now down here, the comment says move duct down. And if I go to any of these beams, then it's going to show me the clash and it's going to have the same comment because I did it to this um, kind of parent clash. And now what I want to do, I'll go ahead and I'll check that one again. And I'm going to notify uh, Ben over here and I'll notify Deb too. And just for safety's sake, I'll notify myself. Um, please resolve before Friday. send that, and it's going to send them a notification. So earlier on, you might have remembered that I we were talking about this thing called one click to bin. And if we go over to Ben's email here, it's going to say that, hey, Aaron sent you an, um, a notification that says, please review and update. And then if I select this view, it's going to open up, again, the Glue app. Well, I'll go to the website, which will prompt the Glue app to open. And if I log in as BIM or Ben, it will send me directly to this view that I created. For the sake of time, I won't kind of make you sit through that. But that's the idea behind one click to BIM. You can send these notifications out, you can send the image, and then in fact, we just got a new one while we're sitting here of the clash. So please resolve before Friday. That sounds pretty important. So I want to go ahead and I want to check that out. So pretending that I'm logged in as Ben over here. I can go through and I can look at the stat, or I'm sorry, the notifications sent to Ben, or if I was Ben, it would be sent to me. And then here are all the, the clashes that were sent to me. So we're looking at this rectangular duct, um, because I'm, I'm Ben and I'm concerned about just my stuff. And so, okay, I see the issue there. So that's, that's pretty cool. But here's where it's really cool. Let me open up Revit. I'm going to open up, oops, sorry. Okay, so it's successfully glued. That's nice. I'm going to open up this file here. And here's really where the rubber hits the road with these systems, um, as far as the one click to BIM and having the shared compository of information or repository of information. Is we go to the add ins tab and we go to the clash pinpoint tool now. Um, I am not logged in as myself. Oh, that's right. Sorry. You have to make sure you have the right views. So this is 3D level 5. I will log in as Ben. I didn't think it would make me, but we'll go ahead and do that. So we're logging in as Ben. Okay, so my Revit ID just changed to him. Go to Clash Pinpoint. Select my host, which will be this collaboration series. We'll go to this project. That's what I'm working on. So here are the result sets that were recently shared with me. Um, and we'll go to this one, which is the new one. I'm going to go ahead and we'll view this. So now in context, I'm able to see where these clashes were. So I can go view selected. And apparently I'm in the wrong model. There is an issue, um, I should have told you, when when I opened up this model and then I saved it and then I glued it, it created a synchronization loss there with the glue site. Um, but anyway, you'd normally be able to fix or select that, view select it, it would zoom to that specific object. Um, and I wouldn't put you through it anyway. But I'd go and I'd resolve the duct, 
add the proper fitting so then it could wrap around the structure. And then I could re-glue the, the model and then come back in here and glue, rerun this clash, and then we get a different color set over here. Uh, so right now that's all of the open. We can do ignored or closed or resolved as the next step. So once it ran through the clash detection again, if I move that duct, then we'd be in closed or resolved status. Um, and so the entire project team would be able to see that. So real quick, we only have, uh, well, we're over time here real quick. So I just wanted to jump in and show you the iPad version real quick. So now I am in my iPad. So this is as if I'm on the project site. And then this L5 is the one that we just made. And then here's some that I made earlier today. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load this one since I cached that one earlier. And maybe now we should do a, the next polling question while we're waiting for this to come up. So now it's all brought to life. Um, and then here's my model here. So what you can see is where my finger is. So right now, if I drag a single finger on the screen, then I'm just doing the orbit. If I pinch, you know, moving my fingers apart, I zoom. And if I pinch together, then I zoom away, just you know, like what you're used to doing on your phones and things. If I hold two fingers, I can drag it. Um, and then if you notice on the left over here, there's these little tools here. Um, the bottom, or this larger wheel here is like a joystick. If I move it, then it'll move me in whatever direction I send it. So it's a lot like um, playing a video game um, in that respect. And I'm going to come down a little bit, zoom in over here. I'm going to go ahead and turn on gravity here. So this this button here will enable gravity and clash de uh, or collision detection, which apparently I failed on that. So um, so then at that point it will actually send you down to the floors. Um, so you know, just kind of floating in space. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay. I'm going to look up, and then now I'm going to walk around. Okay, so it set me down on the floor, and I'm going to try very elegantly, there we go, to land down here on this floor. So that's all pretty cool. But what I want to do is the whole augmented reality thing. So this next button up here, this one, if I, first of all, I want to make sure I'm in the right part of the building, so I should have told you what I tap. I'm going to tap this little button down here. It looks like a little um, wheel with an arrow on it. And I can move my position anywhere that I am. So maybe I'm over here. And then I can set what direction I'm looking at. So if I'm in the field, I can say, OK, I'm about here. This is the direction I'm facing. And I'm on um, level 5. And then I'll go ahead and say go. So here's what level 5 looks like. And then here's, here's the pretty cool thing. Now if I hold down on this button, so it knows what orientation I'm facing, as long as I hold that, and what you can't see now is I'm moving my iPad around. So it's like I'm if I'm on the job site and I set my placement, I can look and say, oh, okay, so that's how that configuration is supposed to occur. Then I can see that in reality and the digital model all both together in context. Um, down below here, I don't really have time to show you, but it's the same idea as the other options. I can go to my views look at different saved views. I can add various markups here. So I can come over here, add a markup. 
add some text, and save that. And then even from here, I can, oh, without clicking me, I can go ahead and I can notify myself or Aaron, send myself a message just straight here from the iPad. So I don't even have to necessarily use the desktop app. If I'm out on the field, I can come in and say, wait a minute, this is not the condition that's going on in the field. You need to review this. So I can do that right there while I'm on the site so I don't have to take a photo and then remember what the photo was later on. Um, we have different measurement tools. And if you've used any of the tools for the first time on the iPad or the desktop application, it'll come up with these little helpful tutorials just to show you what the features are. Um, what I want to do is kind of come down here. And notice that my columns there don't touch. What I can do is go object to object, which is this tool here. And I can click that object and this object. And then it's telling me that those two columns are six foot one inch apart. So I can go and I can look at the model and I can kind of decide, OK, is it a model issue, the, the translation between uh, Revit to the Navisworks file, does something go on there? So it gives me an idea of what to investigate. So um, pretty helpful tools. I can come back here to models, and I can look at other models and do all the other things that we saw before. And that actually is about it for um, this. Um, what we do want to mention is right now there's a promotional event going on that um, where Glue is bundled with Navisworks Manage. Um, so if you are interested in Glue and you want to take advantage of this, then please contact uh, one of our representatives to help you with that. And we do appreciate your time. Sorry, I went a few minutes over. Um, so I'll try to wrap up real quickly here. But we do thank you for taking the time to meet with us today. And I wanted to remind you again about the upcoming sessions, um, December 8th, 10th, 16th, and 17th. And just to let you know, too, the 16th used to be on the 15th. Uh, we had to move it to the 16th. So um, please join us for the other sessions. We're going to continue this life cycle all the way through uh, facilities management. And um, hopefully the idea is to really empower your project and your project teams to work more effectively together. So thank you all.